Mississippi, the home of the blues and the birthplace of America's music. The state's legendary blues trail boasts markers of bluesmen and blueswomen throughout the state. From cotton fields to main streets to churches, cemeteries, and clubs. Mississippi is proud of its musical contributions to the entire world. In the southwest corner of Mississippi, just minutes from the Louisiana state line, lies the small town of Woodville. The blues marker highlights the first African-American composer, William Grant Steele. Jazz musician Lester Young, who accompanied Count Basie and Billie Holiday, and a local bluesman, Scott Dunbar. But my all-time favorite Woodville musician is bluesman Robert Burnett Cage, better known as Soul Boy. I knew Scott Dunbar um, as a blues musician. When I was a child and a teenager, we would listen to Scott um, play at different functions. He was an inspiration to a lot of people around here. He was an inspiration to Robert Cage, and they are an important part of the, the blues heritage of Mississippi. Uh, Mississippi is known as the birthplace of America's music, and Woodville had a role to play in that, so we're, we're proud of that. Soul Boy was born in the Leslie community to Grover and Carrie Cage on April 23, 1937. His father, Grover, worked in logging and timber, while his mother, Carrie, opened the first African-American-owned business in all of Woodville, a grocery store. It is at that store and in this community that Soul Boy first encountered his mentor, Scott Dunbar. Soul Boy was enchanted by Dunbar, and at age seven, began to put buckets together to learn how to play the drums. On his 12th birthday, his parents finally gifted him with his very own guitar. Young Robert taught himself how to play. It used to be a bar room too. They had a, they had a, 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 a bar room over on the other side, right up there by the fence. It was an old fence, that's an old gate there now. If you took in a picture of it up there, you know, it's old gate there now. It used to be, a, they used to have a bar room right there. And, and uh, but Robert wouldn't, you know, I was kind of little at the end, but when they moved it from that bar room, then they opened up the store right here. And then they, it, it was a bar room for a while, a store in a bar room. There used to be a lot of brawling going on. They used to, used to get there and they used to play their own music and people used to come from all around up to the store. And, Dunbar, yeah, I think Scott did play. Yeah, I think he did play up there. But like I said, that was weird back in the day. At 21, Robert married his childhood sweetheart, Minnie Pearl, and they had four children. Sharon, Ronnie, Vincent, also called Buck, and Vanessa. By night, he played in the clubs, and by day, he was a logger like his father, Grover. People say he was a blues man, but he's a rock and roller too. He's the only one I heard now here, the rock and roll. All the Chuck Berry type stuff. He was better at that than he was like a blues man, but he could, he could blues. And all of them tried it outdoing, but they couldn't. They couldn't. They would come up with something every time. And we would always beat them out. Robert often took gigs in lots of hole-in-the-wall spots. Small clubs, shanty shacks. And they start putting me inside of the amplifier and sneaking me in the state, the state line down there. And when I, once they get me in there, put me behind the drum, they knew who it was, you know. They knew it was a, 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 like about 12, 15 year old kids back then, you know. He was young, handsome, and the call of the nightlife was tempting. Well, we rocked the house. I never forget, um, he had just some of these things, but I think that they took beer. Uh, the, the joint was rocking. And, uh, man, Robert was playing that to get time, put behind his head. 
you know. And oh, he did that, that beat hit that he gets a twist in the chair out. And man, once he gets started, that was it. That was it. That was it. He he gonna tear the house up. Matter of fact, I, I remember one time we went to the schoolhouse over there. Had a talent show. You know, Robert had, had, had the women thing bang them there. He was a smoker also and fell heavily into drinking alcohol. And you know, he just was a he just was a, a, a party man. He liked the good times. And it didn't matter when, whether it was day or night, he always was the same. Yeah, yeah, I like to drink. Like to drink and like to smoke. And I was just say, he was the same all the time. He'd get up the next morning, he'd be just the, the same way he was at night when he was drinking and smoking. He's shaking the rock in that head, yeah. Yeah, boy, we gonna have a good time tonight. You gonna be with us, Prez. He used to call me President. As the years went on, Robert continued playing in the nightclubs. His son, Buck, began to join him. They call me Buck. I'm Robert Cage's son. They call Robert Cage Soul Boy. I played in the band with Daddy for years, about 22, 23, maybe 25. And the Daddy bought me a brand new bass guitar and a basement 10 amp, which they rare now. I mean, you know, they went out of circulation, but they, they're coming back, but it was very expensive. They have a lot of big bands used. And that's what I would play bass with Daddy for, for years. Daddy would play songs like uh, Chuck Berry, Gotta Be Good, and, and was Walking with Frankie, that my man made that song was named Frankie, and a lot of other blues. Daddy was really a rock and roll guitar player. People call him the blues, but Daddy was a rock and roll guitarist. Robert eventually gave up logging, but continued to support his family as a mechanic and by playing in the nightclubs. The heavy drinking continued. I was with Daddy, but see logging, but I just never liked logging, but I did it just to be with my daddy. And eventually, you know, I got away from it. After a scary trip to the emergency room, Robert's drinking decreased significantly and he began to wean himself off of cigarettes. Every now and then when the nightlife called, he would find his way back to the bottle. Yet, he would always find his way out. In the late 1990s, um, our dad was admitted to the hospital for excruciating stomach pain. In 1997, Representatives from a record label in Oxford, Mississippi, Fat Possum Records, came to Woodville looking for talent. They found that Scott Dunbar, Robert's mentor, was deceased, but Robert was still alive, well, and very much available. Um, they came and they wanted to hear him play. Um, they, they would often come, you know, they would practice on different things but they like changed the way he was playing music into like another different way. In 1998, Robert's first record was released titled, Robert Cage Can See What You're Doing. He was 61 years old. In touring with Fat Possum, Robert traveled to 48 of the 50 states in America and other countries including Japan, Germany, and Amsterdam. But Robert, Robert went all over the world. I, I'm just sorry that he didn't, didn't get that when he was much younger, so he could really enjoy it. But he, he, he man, Robert was a man. Oh, well, he traveled many different places over the United States. Uh, he traveled overseas to Japan, Australia, and Canada. However, there's no place like home. After Robert came home from his travels, he would venture out every now and then on the road with Fat Possum.
After the last tour with them, Robert gave up the traveling and nightclubs. However, every year he would still serve as the premier talent for Woodville's Wildlife and Deer Festival. Well, the same people that I was playing music for at the ballroom, the next day they were the same people at church. Well, he was a, in a sense, he was a, for years was one of the chief musicians in, you know, in Wilkinson County. Uh, and, you know, and I, I have this for him on YouTube, play music and sing, you know. And like I say, he come from a wonderful family, you know. And, and, uh. In 2011, consequences from his younger life had finally caught up with him. Robert was diagnosed with lung cancer. Treatments cleared up the tumor after several months, but in 2012, it came back with a vengeance. Dad, or Robert, had a bad cough that he just couldn't get rid of. It was lung cancer. My dad had smoked since he was a teen, but he had stopped smoking 20 years prior to his demise. He was treated and was given a good report, but it viciously returned, and within two years, he had succumbed to it. In May 2012, an unconscious Robert was transferred from the Field Memorial Hospital in Centerville, Mississippi, to Our Lady of the Lake Hospital in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He was baptized in the year 2012. He was sent home in June and ordered on hospice to await his inevitable death. On July 20th, 2012, Robert died of cancer at Our Lady of the Lake in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He was buried six days later. He was sent numerous cards and flowers by family, friends, and fans. The town of Woodville gave a resolution for the town's beloved bluesman. Hello, it's me again, and I hope you enjoyed everything. Right now, I'm standing uptown on Main Street by the Blues Marker on which my grandfather, Scott Dunbar, and other Woodville musicians are on. One of the most fascinating things to me about my grandfather is that he was in the prime of his career as an older person, 61 years old. That's why many of the pictures you see of him as an older man instead of him as a younger man when he was in his wild and youthful days. Thank you all so much for tuning in and I truly, truly hope you enjoyed watching what I had to say and so many others had to say about my grandfather. A special thank you to my interviewees, Mr. Wilkerson, Mr. Ford, Mr. Oubre, Mr. Cage, Miss Cage, and Miss Sherman, and Mr. Spiller. This is not the end of this documentary. I definitely intend to go further with it. I had so much fun filming it and interviewing people and learning things that I didn't know about my granddad. So, see you later, because this is definitely not the end.